Yeah, it was 2025 and the game's on tight AI's the future but the threats ain't right Deep seeks under fire, hackers on the rise They're locking it down, no newbies in the sky Today I'm going to talk to you about something that I think is very interesting and kind of scary, but it's going to affect everyone on planet Earth sooner rather than later. And that is uh, the eight business model. And it's not eight as in uh, the number eight, but actually as I eat you, I ate it. And ATE stands for anything to everything services. And I'm going to show you that implementation in action today because I'm doing this with the laboratory that I have myself that I call forces.ai. Um, so before we get ahead of ourselves, uh, I will explain how forces embodies these, uh, the eight vision in the structure and easy to fall away. My name is Linus Oman. Uh, I work as a strategic designer. I've been doing this data design for 30 years and the last 15 years accumulated insights now that we're being disrupted by AI for real this time, I, I have written the book Mindful Disruption about leading AI change uh, as a leader. It focuses on how you start actually being empathetic with your coworkers before you try to push agendas of AI to automate everyone working in your business. Uh, please read it if you are so inclined. Now, all of these insights led me to the revolutionary idea that businesses, digital businesses today, the services that we access, a lot of these things is going to change. And I'm going to not focus so much on the, the reasoning or the implications of it today, other than that eight stands for anything to everything services, which I would say is a meta framework for automating the path from idea to outcome and iterating it, making sure it, uh, it's as good as it can get. Everything that's on an experience level as a service are going to be greatly affected by this. So think anything where you, the, the human accessing the thing, all of those platforms is going to be revolutionized. Why? Because what AI needs is the data and the platforms need to be AI specific built so that AI can empower people. So it's a new layer driving the services, the, the software services. And I, I don't see people acting on this fast enough. They're trying to implement AI as some sort of app or something in their business. They're not designing it specifically with AI as a superpower. So it is going to take that place and it's going to disrupt a, a whole lot of businesses. Uh, so for the incumbents, that's uh, not great. For the newcomers, go do it. So. To be able to do this, you need to have an AI first process that is also a meta process. Uh, uh, all this talk about meta has nothing to do with uh, Mark Zuckerberg. It actually has to do with the fact that it needs to be a blueprint. So the blueprint can be reused in as many steps as uh, necessary. And the one I designed, I call it orbit. It's because it orbits around and comes back to, on itself and reports back and say, this is how it went. Uh, should we do another round? Uh, it stands for that you organize, you find the resources, you start building stuff, you implement it, and then you transform it. The transformation goes then back to the organize. In organize, we also have the safety breaks, which makes it uh, a process well suited for autonomous AI because it, it needs to be aligned before it even starts doing any other step. So with that said, in my platform, the three steps that I see are crucial for being able to do this uh, for humans uh, is the three layers are strategic, tactical and practical. And I'm going to show you all three examples of all three layers uh, in this presentation today. So on the strategic layer, uh, with, that is the see everything lens. High level oversight, bird's eye view of initiatives, goals and system wide performance, goal setting and alignment, being able to do uh, the things that make sure that the AI runs smoothly in your organization and actually creates the value to the end users that surprise them with delight, which is always my goal when working with businesses. That's what they need to be able to do. And of course, this is for the first time ever real data-driven insights because data-driven insights, this comes from a transformation leader. I, I help organizations transform into digital versions of themselves. This is the hardest part, getting people to understand the same data in the same way and not just understanding it, but actually then making decisions so that they can become better 
and the speed of which they can do this is always lacking. This is one of the core reasons why I realized that humans should not necessarily be the ones executing on insights. AIs will probably be faster, better, smarter, more efficient in every sense, way, and form. Uh, it does not, and I mean, I'm a human centric person. I, all of my teaching is based in making sure people, uh, are surprised by the light. <laughs> but weirdly enough, humans are not great at doing that. So with that said, the strategic layer could look something like this. Um, here we have a switch. We can see the digital and fiscal departments in our business. The overall score of the whole business, we see it like this. We can flap that around. We can look, we can select different departments as ever we choose. We can see how the major processes are going. We can double click and get down into some statistics of what is going wrong and what is going right. We have our alerts. We also have our AI insights of what you should probably be focusing on. Let's now then go to the digital version so that I can give you an example when we go to the tactical level, but we see something in digital marketing here is lacking. Uh, we have something we call CAG and it's going down. We're going to double tap on that and go into the tactical layer very soon. But before I do that, let's just see now what is the tactical layer? Well, what is it we're talking about there? So the tactical layer is the insight co-creation layer. This is where we do collaborative decision making. AI works alongside humans to analyze challenges, brainstorm solutions and plan next steps. Uh, we need to have actionable intelligence that with the systems to help teams quickly interpret data and form a coherent plan that we can agree on and execute on. And then, of course, that means uh, that this, these are uh, co-creation workflows. Uh, we refine ideas, organize resources, and we're ready to build the implementation phase. Okay, what would that maybe look like then? Okay, so now we're in level two uh, in, in the platform. So for this case, we remember we had something not going right in the conversion phase of, of a funnel. Let's double tap into that. And now we can see that we are uh, full on in the process here. Uh, so what we've done here is that we've actually gone to the data integration and we have some data visualization. So we can see that uh, we have the amount of traffic we're getting inside. We have added a module to show us uh, the conversion trends, the device distribution, uh, where, where, where people are coming from. So we're actually we are enriching our insight of what might be the problem. Now, then we go to the something that is a bit more interesting. We're going into the analysis of the funnel. In this case, we look at the marketing team and what they think, you know, they have ideas of what should be happening. So implement personalized product recommendations based on browsing history. That could be a good idea. Now the sales teams, they're all, we're all working in this platform together. They also have ideas, current, uh, create urgency with limited time offers on the high uh, intent pages. Maybe that's an idea. So we have some votes there, but remember we're aiming to be an AI driven platform. So the step to get there, we need to be able to let old organizations, legacy organizations, not design with AI first, uh, as a starting point, but they also need to be on the train. So uh, alongside the, the human teams, we always have the AI. Uh, so in this case, we can look at what the AI is saying. Uh, and the AI is saying that uh, we have high abandonment rate detected on payment pages. Consider simplifying the checkout process. What we see then is that we can uh, do optimization of the landing pages because we now ask our AIs, our AI team, uh, or orchestrator to do a real time implementation of an adjustment based on the insights that we have that we as humans have agreed on. We now take the decision, act on this and see how it performs. Because then you can see that at the speed of which the AI is actually creating differences and it, it experiments, it gets better, better. Oh, we did a weird experiment. Then we go back up again. So we can see how it, how the trend is going. Uh, and moving forward in, in time. And this is something that humans have a very hard time doing. So that is the tactical level uh, of, of the platform. Okay, so we have the, the last layer then. Uh, the practical layer, iteration, uh, loop and execution. So this is, I, I think this is very fun. Here we can access the direct automation. AI agents perform tasks such as coding, content creation or process management. Hands-on iteration, rapid testing, feedback, and improvement happens here. 
And of course, we can see orbit in action. This is the lowest level where, uh, so orbit starts from the top, but we can see the, the speed of orbit down in the lowest level. And so the lowest level reports back to this place, right? So this is where we see the, the in implementation of the lowest level. Now we're in the mid level. We're on the tactical level. Great. So. Let's now then go into something very practical. Uh, so in this case, uh, we're, we're jumping away from the examples that I did there because this part of the presentation is, and the lowest in our platform is actually working. Uh, I've, I've implemented the, the practical layer for real so that I know that I'm not just huffing smoke, that I'm actually, uh, that I know what I'm talking about. In this case, I said, what would happen uh, if you could get news not packaged as boring text, but something that you would actually enjoy. And, the, and wh what would that do to the retention? So this is the ATA backbone, right? Anything to everything platform. This is where th this actually happens, but you have to be able to see the performance and the insights on higher levels and the strategic and tactical views, because this is just spaghetti for 99% of people, even though I think it's very pretty spaghetti. It's still spaghetti. This is more for coders and architects and people who actually thrive in the building blocks of fun stuff that we think is fun. Most people just want to see the results. So we have the, we, we, we go from get, gathering data, giving us some results on that. We instruct an agent to do something. We give them an extra prompt to make sure that they're, they're aligned. They take actions, they give back results. We refine and reiterate this a couple of times and until we have uh, an AI. And of course, the AIs, we can choose wh whichever the AI we want. We have all the AIs in the world here and working flawlessly in the platform. So eventually we get to the note that it's actually a a making us, giving us the structure for songs. And now we take the structure for songs and we send them out to something that can generate music, something that can generate an image. And we, if we want to have videos to it, we have something that can generate videos and those will then be put back into the results. And we would have something that is very close to well packaged. And once we know the format of that and we know where we can store it, we can bring that back into the platform, just make another agent node, give them some modalities that they are in charge of, and then say, now take this, bake it together, and give it to these platforms, aggregate it through APIs. So some of these steps I had to do manually because I don't have APIs to everything yet, because the future is not quite here yet. Uh, but still, what we managed to do then, by using this exact, this actual process, uh, what I got was using AI from uh, week five, uh, 2025. And so you can listen to the music. It's real. And uh, I'm going to give you the link to, <laughs> to listen to the music. I retain news better in this form than, than just reading stacks of text. Um, uh, but this is just an example. But I think it's a pretty convincing example of what you can do when you have a platform, an eight platform. Uh, I mean, when you realize the po potential of this, uh, you, you realize, but I, then I could have personalized anything formulated to my context so that I can learn in the way that I best learn. Or, you know, so, so it's like a new universe where anything is possible, but it needs a backbone. And that backbone is not the old tradition of software because the old tradition of software it's it's almost like it's based the business model is based on well now we, you need to bring in consultants to configure everything and with ai and some clean platform uh, and structures and um, principles you got to be able to tell the ai use this and now give me this and it will just do it for you and this is uh, very exciting and very scary uh but I think it's it's the future. Completely automated pop singer uh, on Spotify. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, I mean, I'm a consultant. Please just reach out. I'm here to answer any questions. Uh, be good. Together you're making something great. Well, from the beats to the rhymes, it's all in the code. AI's the muse, it's your creative road. Creative flow, yeah, it's all about the art. 
AI's the partner, it's right in your heart From the script to the screen, it's a beautiful ride Creative flow, AI's by your side So if you're feeling stuck and you need a spark AI's the ignition, it's lighting the dark Creative flow, it's all about the vibe With AI on your side, you're gonna thrive